cast your mind back. The year was 2010. Justin Bieber had just released Baby, Call of Duty Black Ops 1 had recently hit shelves, and I was 10 years old. This isn't me, by the way, I just needed an, an image to represent the, um, uh... And at this age, whenever boredom would kick in, I'd head over to the shitty old family laptop that was too slow to run anything with more than four colours and took about seven hours to boot up. And when I finally did make it past the Windows 7 loading screen, I would head over to Google and my fingers would type in two magical words that any 10 year old had bound in their muscle memory. Flash games. Now of course flash games were a thing way before 2010. Nakey Jakey made a great video on flash games in their history. And after I watched it, I thought to myself, I actually played the shit out of Flash games. I mean, more than I'd realised. I'd burn hours into some of these games. I had a deep love for Flash games. Now, it was only 2010 when I really got into Flash games, and it was hardly the Stone Age. I mean, I had a PS3 at the time, and sure, I'd play a lot of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and Call of Duty World at War at age 10. Hey gamers, today I'm playing Call of Duty World at War. Ooh! Ooh! Ah! Oh my gosh, this is brutal. This is brutal, but awesome. Miller. <laughs> and even though I had moderate access to these huge AAA titles that were coming out throughout the year, in my state of boredom, by choice, I'd still turn to the games that were firmly ingrained into the Internet Explorer browser. Every good man had their site of choice, their flash game dealer, if you will. New grounds, addicting games, mini clip, and my supplier was a site called Ancon Arcade. A thousand plus free flash games. And boy, they weren't lying there. Now, I'm not exactly sure how popular the site was. Like a strong zero. Maybe it didn't stand up against the big dogs. But it was my chosen supply route of flash games. And holy shit would I frequent this site. I mean, I was on it constantly. It got to the point where I started to know these two motherfuckers more than my own real life friends. Loading up Ancon and having the colourful array of the site's most popular flash games right there on the homepage, all just waiting to be clicked on, was like cocaine to 10 year old me. Cocaina. And boy did I snort that shit. Ancon covered all of your flash game related needs. All the games in set categories. You had a number of simplistic flash games, easy to to play with basic concepts, titles like Dress Up Yoda, where you would dr dress up Yoda in a range of interesting costumes with stupendous voice acting whenever you'd click on an accessory. Bust a cap, will I? Mmm. Bust, Bust a cap, cap will I? Will I? Will I? Will I? Or Slug Designer, where you would design a slug. I think it's pretty safe to say I was quite easily amused as a child. It is one of the very best video games ever made. But hey, at least it gave your slug a life story once you were done designing it, so you got slug law. What does that mean? Come. Mini Put 3, the third installation in the Mini Put trilogy, where after inputting your username, you got thrown into a number of different golf course levels, releasing your inner Tiger Woods as you try to get the best score possible, making use of the incredible ball mechanics, simple but great execution. Particles, a game where you use your mouse cursor to control the protagonist. This blue ball, moving it around the screen, trying your best to avoid the enemy balls in red, with extra balls being gradually added over time, the game quickly increasing in difficulty. Stupidly simple concept, but highly addictive. Although, the background music was slightly intense for what was actually happening on screen. Or Magical Arkanoid, which was basically just a scuffed brick breaker, but that shit was still fun. Or more unique concepts like this strange Japanese game where I could never really read the text on the menu buttons, so I sort of just randomly clicked my way onto the game. You basically played as this couple that worked in an office, while this girl held a conversation with the boss. But every now and again, the phone would ring, distracting the boss, and it was your job to make them kiss. I guess the aim of the game was to get the longest kiss in human history. Or, or something. But just make sure you don't hold the click button down for too long, because if the boss turns around and catches you in the act, he won't be too happy. Hello, is this Mr. Pooper Lost Singing Ham? Uh, my name's Jeff. Cuck Simp. You're the lowest of the low. There was also a number of physics based flash games that were stupidly satisfying to play. Block balancing games like Blockster, Perfect Balance or Totem Destroyer. Dexterity games where you had to be stupidly careful with your mouse. Games like Hangar, Hangar 2, Helicopter or Blocko, which was just 
helicopter, or guesstimate games like Raft Wars, two kids battling a gang of pirates across a body of water, having to aim your gun at just the right angle and apply just the right amount of power to your shot to deal the most damage, or knock them clean into the ocean. Never mind the ability to upgrade your raft and throwables. Sound filter, six monitors, pedals, drums, or the huge number of simplistic puzzle games with basic objectives. Games like Shape Switcher, having to alter your colour and shape to make it through a number of gates to reach the finish line. These games starting off simple, but quickly progressing, with later levels requiring you to work for NASA to have any chance of completing them. With a lot of these puzzle games actually having some stupidly original concepts, a game like Nimble Rewind, yeah. where you simply played as a ball trying to reach the finish, but you had the ability to rewind time at any point in the level by pressing space Bar. It's rewind time, man. It's now we Which made for some crazy interesting solutions to each level. Or sandbox puzzle games like Sugar Sugar, where you had to draw lines to guide a flow of sugar into a teacup. Or Draw Then Play, where you were presented with a number of levels where you drew and then played, allowing unique art pieces to be used to help you complete each level. I mean, the fact that I could draw lines with my mouse that this strange mummy character could then interact with blew my puny 10 year old brain at the time. <laughs> Or games that didn't even really fit into a specific category, but were still amazing. Feed and Frenzy, a stylistic game where you would go around the sea eating small fish and birds, trying to get the highest score you can as you build up a speed boost. But just watch out for those big fuck off fish that are trying to do the same to you. Or Packzon, working as Pac-Man to create outlines of shapes with your trail, trying your best to gradually fill the play area with blocks until a certain percentage of the screen is filled, giving the ghosts a smaller area to move around in without letting them hit your trail, in turn killing you. Another inventive concept, getting harder and harder as more ghosts were added, even ones that would chase you around the edge of the map, making for some stupidly tense moments. I'm not exactly sure if they had the legal rights to Pac-Man, but um, the game was still fun. Or goddamn balloon tower defense that became so popular it's on Steam now, and as we all know, every game on Steam is finished, well made, and polished. I'm going to take a look at this petrol lawnmower behind me. I'm going to look at some reasons why this lawnmower, or any other lawnmower for that matter, won't start. Not to mention the flash games that were just blatant ports of huge platformers. NES. Get the fuck out of here, I have Internet Explorer. Now however enjoyable and addictive these more simplistic games were, you had the other end of the spectrum, completely fully fleshed out and polished flash games. Games like Riddle School, a point and click puzzle game with intricate complex puzzles, multiple episodes and a fleshed out story. I remember having to watch full blown walkthroughs on YouTube on this game to get through the parts of the game I got stuck on. Or Age of War, you deploy your troops to battle back against the opposing fleet, having to spend your coins wisely, starting out in the Stone Age and slowly progressing through different time periods, varied troop abilities, base custom optimization options and special attacks. The impossible mode of this game is insanely difficult. <laughs> Not to mention that the theme music of the game is basically the national anthem of all Flash gamers around the world. Perfect. And of course, not forgetting arguably the biggest Flash game of all time, Happy Wheels. Not only did the game let you play as a number of different in-depth three-dimensional characters with groundbreaking abilities, but it allowed users to create their own mini-games and levels within the game that other users could then play. Not to mention the YouTube Happy Wheels boom of 2013 that a lot of YouTubers can thank for their career. What the fuck? Oh shit, no way! Puzzle games, fighting games, local multiplayer games to sports games, from the simplistic to the complex and polished, Flash games were for everyone. Not only are these Flash games so fun, but they were so easily accessible. Now, of course, the games were completely free, but there was a whole network of counterfeit Flash games in schools all around the world. People bringing in Flash games on memory sticks and secretly playing tanks at the back of the classroom, or that one kid that would find a singular Flash game website that the school's firewall hadn't blocked yet. Everyone would hop on that shit secretly for about a week, until one kid would always be caught on it by a teacher, thus getting the site banned, and the cycle repeats. 
Well, the best thing about Flash games is the fact that any kid out there could get their hands on a crack copy of Adobe Flash and make whatever games they had in their imagination, having full creative freedom, with full-blown online communities being built around the development of these Flash games. A lot of them were seriously well made, with the teenagers behind them being genuinely talented. Throw a game together, bang that shit online, and if it hits, it ends up being played by millions of kids all around the world. Each Flash game offered something different, and when you have an attention span as short as mine, hopping from game to game, each one offering a different, unique concept with thousands of games at your fingertips, it was like a gold mine. And with Adobe Flash being discontinued in December of this year, making it even harder to access these sites, the true final nail in the Flash coffin, it's safe to say that the days of Flash games are long gone, being washed away in a sea of mobile games, next-gen consoles, and AAA titles. Although, Flash games will always hold a certain place in my heart. Especially Dress Up Yoda. And with all of that said, goodbye.